you know, all these words that kind of been preached at kind of leads us to one major thing. And I believe that's the last word where Jesus said, uh, Luke 23, 46, 43, 46. It says, Father, into your hands I commit, commend, dedicate, give my spirit. Amen. Jesus said, nobody takes life out of me. I lay it and I pick it up when I want it. What did he say? He was absolutely in control of his life, death and everything, and burial and resurrection. Now this morning I want you to understand that Good Friday is not the celebration of the property of the church. It is a message to the whole world, regardless of where you come from, what's your background, what kind of a religious background you come from. This morning I want you to know that this message is equally relevant for you. In fact, it's more relevant for you than anybody who's in the church for many years. Amen? Amen. I want to, I mean, I promised this last week, you know, that I would kind of pull out a few, uh, few writings in, you know, the, the literature from other religions which talks about the without the shedding of the blood there is no remission of sins which is a scripture that's pulled out of Hebrews. All right? I want to read, you know, this is not to compare with anybody, I want to, please don't misunderstand me, this is only to help you highlight and understand that the prophetic word what God spoke through different men of God came to fulfillment on this day. All right? Now, <clears throat> Artha Veda, chapter 13, 3 and 4 verse, Kumaro Loka Ajanista Putra Navarate, why this is Sanskrit, okay? Now this is talking about a son will be born to a virgin in this world. That will that ye hold that son is what is superior, born in a cattle shed. This is from Rigveda, chapter 355, verse 1. Alright? <clears throat> talks talk talks about the virgin birth. Now the scientists, uh, doctors, anybody can talk about it anything, try to prove anything that is impossible to have a virgin birth. That's what every, you know, every religious book talks about. Also, the Vedas talks about two births. Alright? Uh, it says, Asama kam tu vashiste tanni bhoda dvijatoma from Bhagavad Gita chapter 1 and verse 7. Which means, a perfect Brahman who has found God needs to be born twice. Nobody can become a perfect Brahmin without being born a second time. What's the reference? John chapter 3 and verse 5. Jesus answered unto them and said, Truly I say unto you, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen. Not so many things. Now let me read another one. <clears throat> Rig Veda, 109, no. Yeah, I think it's 109, verse 15. The sacrificial victim is to be crowned with a crown made of tawny wines. Yajurveda, before death he should be given a drink called Somarasa, an intoxicating herbal juice, which Rufus just talked about. Samaveda, part 2. God is the ruler of people. He will offer his body as a sacrifice for his people for the remission of their sins. I got so many things. I don't really, don't really have time. All right, let's go to that scripture where it says, Jesus said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. You know what he's talking about? He's saying the mission is accomplished and now what follows is the new life. Amen. If you just leave, listen to the six words and not really get a hold of the seventh word, which is for the present day, you're going to miss out the whole message of the Good Friday. You know what he said? Father, I commit my spirit into your hands. Psalm 31 and verse 5, a prophetic, you know, if you look into the scriptures, you would see a lot of prophetic utterances about Jesus Christ were revealed through the Old Testament prophets and particularly King David. Psalm 31 verse 5, it says, into your hand I commit my spirit, you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. You know what? He was, and the Bible says when he, Jesus said that he died, it, does, it, didn't, it doesn't mean that he kind of gave up his spirit and died not to be risen again or not, not to wake up again. But what it means is that from here onwards, he's entering into a different realm. From this death, all right, Romans 6 talks about that we identify ourselves with the death of Christ, with the burial of Christ, and with the resurrection of Christ. Talking about our past, when our, our old man is crucified to the sin, the burial refers to the old man being put to death, 
never to raise up again and then the hope of mass the hope of good friday or the message of the cross is the power of resurrection it says i'm giving my spirit into your hands ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse uh, which verse is that chapter 12 and verse 7 then shall the dust will return to earth as it, it was and the spirit will return to god who gave it doesn't matter who, whose it is now in the beginning in the garden of eden if you will see that god said let's make man in our own image and in our likeness the bible says that god made them male and female all right and then he says god already created and then he made man out of the dust of the earth what he created he breathed into them to bring in life talking about the transfer of the spirit of god into a man amen and now it says the dust will return to dust because this body is made out of dust that's why we all look different yet the bible says there is so much of similarities between us because we are made in the image and in the likeness of god which means in the spirit we resemble we are in the likeness in the image of god with the divine abilities of god the creativity of god is within us and it says the dust will return to the earth as it, as it was because it was picked out of there but what was created by God will return unto God. Talking about Jesus saying, my spirit will return unto you. Now, what is the relevance of this scripture that Jesus spoke on the cross? The relevance is, he said, from this moment onwards, I'm coming back into a glory, into a position, into a place of rulership and authority. Amen. I want to take you to a scripture from Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians 1, very quickly, let's look, look at the scripture. Ephesians 1 and verse 20. Ephesians 1 and verse 20. And God wrought a work in Christ when he raised him up from the dead and seated him where? At the right hand of who? In the heavenly places. Now I want you to understand, okay? God raised Jesus up. And now Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God the Father in the heavenly places. Now what he's saying is that at the time when Jesus said, into thy hands I commit my spirit, O Lord, it's a time of dedication. It's a time of sanctification. It's a time where he said, I'm going to give my life to you so that I'm coming back into that power of glory where I'm going to rule over the earth. All right. It's not talking about a finished work. It's talking about a new life that begins from there. Amen. Now look at verse 21. Far above all principalities and powers and every... Uh, and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also that which is yet to come what he's saying that now he's been raised up when he said i'm giving my spirit into your hands he was talking about god putting him in a place of authority god transferring after his suffering because he finished the work and now begins the new life that god wants us to have he says far above all principality and power and might and dominion every name not only in this world but also in the world that is yet to come and verse 20, and he has put all things under his feet, talking about Jesus, and gave them to be the head over all things to the church, talking about the authority. You know what? This morning, the message of the cross is that God has transformed your life and put you in a place of authority. When, you, when, you, when we meditate on the scripture where it says, Father, I commit my spirit into your hands, it's talking about, Lord, I dedicate my life to you, Lord. I give my spirit back to you, Lord. I give the rulership of my life into your hands so that you can control because I'm going to lead, dominate, and have dominion over everything, Lord. Go to chapter 2 and verse uh, uh, 4. Chapter 2 and verse 4. But God who is rich in mercy, 4, chapter 2 and verse 4. But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, now I want you to think about the whole message of cross is love, grace, and mercy. And because of that, God has, uh, because he loved us, go to the next one please. Even when we were yet dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with who? Now on this Good Friday day, I want you to know that, you know, your sins are forgiven, your old man is put to death. Now, you're going to rise up into that place of authority when you say, Father, I commit my life into your hands, Lord. Amen. It says, we are made alive together with Christ Jesus. Go to the next one, please. And raised up, not alone, together. With who? With Jesus Christ. Which we are going to celebrate in a, in a few days. It's a reminder of that resurrection. It's a reminder of a new person coming back into life, saying, God, I dedicate my life as a result of that you enjoy this position. 
Amen. And raised us up together and made us sit together where? In heavenly places along with Jesus Christ. Which means anybody who believes in Jesus and accepts and says, God, I'm going to give my spirit. I'm going to commit my life into your hands. is saying, you are going to be elevated. You're going to be seated along with Jesus Christ in the heavenly places. And you are going to rule over the principalities, powers, dominions, and every name that is coming, not only in this world, but also in the world yet to come. Why? Because we are raised along with Jesus to be seated along with God the Father. So this morning, I want you to make, your, make a commitment. I want you to dedicate your lives to, to, <clears throat> to God and say, Lord, I want to commit my life, Lord. Just as Jesus said, into thy hands I commit my spirit, O Lord. You know what he's talking about? He's talking about a transfer that took place on that day. On, on that day, he said, I'm going to come back into the heavenly places. Not as a man that came into the earth. But I'm coming back as somebody who has conquered sin, death, dominion, power, sickness, debt, defeat. He has conquered everything and he said, I'm coming back into the heavenly places to be seated along with God the Father. Right now, I want you to close your eyes.